Good evening, everybody. This is Uncle Russ. 15 minutes with Uncle Russ coming to life from Koh Samui, the beautiful land of Thailand. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. And uh, yeah, nice to have you around again and spend time with you and share a little bit of what's going on. Had a really great week this week and got some fantastic news that we are now, we, we will be in a position to help inmates in prison improve their English. How cool is that? Eh? What a blessing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for those of you over the months and years that have been praying that uh, we get that breakthrough again. And God has heard and answered your prayers and our prayers. Amen. So, <laughs> I want to talk to us about a strange little instrument. I mean, you could call it a toy, you could call it a weapon, you could, you could call it a lot of things. But it's actually this. Can you see it? The boomerang. Now, how many of you know the history behind the boomerang? I'm sure you will be equally surprised as I was when I went and I did the research to find out about this amazing instrument. Or, well, it's used as a musical instrument, it's used for sport, it's used for hunting, and it's used for killing people. Okay, so... I assumed that its origins, that is the boomerang, is from Australia. Can you imagine how surprised I was to find out? And again, this is open to discussion. This is just what the research says, not what I say. The boomerang was invented between 25,000 and 50,000 years ago. The oldest boomerang discovered in Poland is 20,000 years old. Huh. And they reckon that was the first man-made object that was heavier than air that could fly. Right? And yet they also make claims that this thing could be hurled at distances of 150 to 200 yards. That's some distance. That oak has got an arm on him, if you ask me. Probably would have been a great baseball picture. Uh, and it said it was made from the roots of a tree, the mulga or wattle tree. Okay, so this is the non... And here again, I didn't know that you get a returning boomerang and a non-returning boomerang. <laughs> so the... The non-returning boomerang was actually used to fight and kill people and animals. You know, if they in tribes or clans or whatever, wherever these people were got into mischief, they would hurl these things at each other. So there's a thought. Now the second type of boomerang that you get. Uh, the, this one, this one's invention is accredited to the Aborigines from Australia, and it was called the returning boomerang. And it, they reckon it was developed over time through trial and error. Prehistoric man f would first throw s stones or sticks. At some times, he realized that a curved stick actually created more accuracy and velocity. <laughs> Imagine the guy throwing a stick. Then he picks up another stick, and suddenly there's one that's got a slight twist, and he throws. What happened? I wonder if it conked him on the head, and then he figured, oh, jeez, I wonder. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just guessing. Okay. And I reckon that this thing, this returning boomerang, has always been used for sport by the Aborigines. So now, what's this got to do with the Word of God? Because <laughs> we're always going to get back to His Word. Okay, so I want to read a scripture to us. 
It's in Isaiah 55, verse 10 to 11. I'm going to first read verse 10, and that would be pertaining to the non-returning boomerang. So the, Isaiah 55, verse 10, For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and does not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Wow. Now verse 11, I think would pertain to the returning boomerang. And it says this, So shall my word be that goes from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Cool, eh? You didn't have me neither. Don't worry. All brand new to me. Galatians 6, 6 to 10. It says, Be generous and do good. Let him who is taught the word share it in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked forever. Whatever a man sows, he will also reap. For he who sows to the flesh will reap of the, uh, uh, of the, uh, for he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially those who are of the household of faith. See, if you've got a boomerang, that's a returning one. If you throw it, it's going to come back. If it's the non-returning one and you throw it, it'll keep going until it hits something or misses and lands, and then you have to go and fetch it. And we need to realize that whatever we sow in life, if you sow violence and if you sow discord and if you sow division, if you sow all of these things, don't expect a good thing to come back because whatever you sow out there will come back to you the same in like. Okay. But not everybody who sows also reaps. Now, do you see what I'm saying? 1 Corinthians 3, 6 to 8. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants, he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. So in some instances, you'll be sowing into people's life and telling them the gospel and you... You can't understand that they, they just don't get it. And you become a little bit disillusioned and frustrated. Don't be. Because you never know. The seed that you sowed, somebody else will come along and water it. And then in due season, it will be a, a, give you a harvest. Yep. Other times, somebody else would have sown you water. And you don't know. Other times, still somebody's sown, somebody's watered, and you reap a harvest. But in all times, God is the one that affects the growth. Okay. And then, we all know the parable of the sower. I just want to share a little something with you. I've been sharing it with people over this last little while. Consider this. Matthew 13, 3 to 9. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell in stony places where they did not have much earth, and immediately sprung up because they had no depth of earth. When the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell amongst the thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell and grew good ground and healed a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. 
So, if we look at the story, we start off with a 75% deficit. Yeah, I know you're looking at me puzzled and you're thinking, what is he talking about? Think of this. So it says here, first one, some fell by the wayside. No return. Some fell in stony places. No return. Some fell amongst the thorns, but some fell on good soil. So that means 75% of where the seed that was sown, there was no return. 75% deficit. But how's this for amazing? Out of the 25% that left over, we have the potential to see a hundredfold. And also the risk of only getting uh, 40, well, it says 60 times back and losing 40 fold or losing 70 fold. You see, our job as sowers, we must go and sow the word. Just keep sowing. Some of it, people are going to just, nothing going to happen. In one ear, out the other ear. Others are going to get excited, but they're not going to follow up and follow through. And they're not going to get deep into the things of God. And then off they go. And others will, will also receive, but then they allow the things of this world. And poverty and sickness and disease and trials and tribulations and temptations. And they'll fall by the wayside. But we have to keep on going. We've got to throw that boomerang. Maybe it's a boomerang that will return, a returning boomerang. Maybe it will be a non-returning boomerang. But the seed that we sow, our job is not to go back and collect the seeds of the areas that were ineffective. Our job is to sow the Word of God by faith and sometimes watering by faith. And every now and then we get to rejoice as we reap a harvest. But in all of that, we should never forget that God gets the glory. Amen. Did you like that little story? Remember, boomerang. Whatever you sow, you will reap. So, we need to be careful what we say out there. Amen. Have yourself a wonderful evening and a blessed weekend. Don't forget to fellowship with your brothers and sisters on Sunday. Not for the sake of ticking the box that you've been there, but that you sow back into the kingdom. And when you get to church or your place of fellowship, don't feel like you're doing everybody a massive favor, especially if you're on a serving team. We are called to serve. Volunteer as we may be called, but let us do it not grudgingly, but with a willing heart in the hope that somehow, somehow our actions and the things we say will bless somebody to the point that they want a changed life because they have seen the change that has occurred in your and my life. Amen. Thank you so much for your time. Have a blessed time. And uh, you know what I'm going to say? If I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. God bless and goodbye until next time. This is Uncle Russ signing off. Bye.